We are going to bring in right now retired FBI agent, also fellow at the Brennan Center for Justice, Michael German. Michael, this 21-year-old suspect charged with seven counts of first-degree murder. He is due in court today, faces life in prison. What do you expect for him out of the process? Uh, well, we've already learned a lot about this troubled young man's previous brushes with law enforcement, but I imagine we're going to learn that there were others who knew there was a problem and other opportunities to intervene. But unfortunately, we've gutted our social services, public health and education budgets, so there's no safety net to refer them to. We treat every problem as a law enforcement problem, but time and time again, we see this methodology isn't adequate to deal with troubled people who haven't yet committed a serious crime. Michael, I want to pick up on something that you just told us, which is that this suspect passed four background checks when buying firearms. His father signed off on that. No red flags popped up. So what does this suggest about the current steps or even potential future ones to screen potential gun owners? Well, I, again, I think we're looking at every problem as a law enforcement problem and, and expecting the federal background check to determine if somebody is going to commit a future crime. And really, the background check is only to determine if they're eligible to purchase a firearm. In other words, if they haven't committed a felony, haven't engaged in, been convicted of domestic violence offense, or been involuntarily committed to a mental health facility. Uh, and it has to be done very quickly, so there's really not a lot of time to do a thorough background investigation. Now, Illinois does have a red flag law, but apparently the police didn't follow up on their previous interactions with him, in which they took away his knives and swords. So I think there will be a remaining question to answer about why they didn't follow up more aggressively in this case. Yeah, because, Michael, many people hearing that would think, well, isn't that enough? Uh, and it, it very well may be enough. Uh, the police didn't miss this threat, right? They, they have a program called See Something, Say Something. People saw something and they reported him more than once. And the police reportedly followed up with those interactions. So I think they do need to explain why, why the red flag laws weren't triggered or what they had to do to make sure that they were. Um, and part of the problem is... We, we ha have adopted a methodology of, of violence prevention uh, that, that is simply ineffective. Uh, a lot of it involves trying to identify beforehand who might be a threat in the future. And in hindsight, we can look at some of this violent imagery on the Internet and say, wow, these were red flags. But there is so much of that type of content online, and the vast majority of people who post that kind of content are not actually a threat to anyone. So it's very difficult for anyone, law enforcement included, to determine which among the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people publishing uh, what we might consider threatening content are actually going to be a threat in the future. And what we have to do is reassess those programs so that we're not creating so many false alarms that draw away resources from actual investigations. Michael, we know the Brennan Center works to ensure that lawmakers respect human rights, fundamental freedoms when addressing terrorism. In your opinion, how should the White House, how should local officials address these shooting tragedies? Well, I think they need to move away from this model of prevention where they, they promised that if, if we gave up our privacy and gave them the authority to conduct broad domestic intelligence collection about all of us, that they would somehow be able to discern who might uh, uh, become a threat in the future. Uh, what we have to acknowledge is half of the violent crime in this country goes unsolved. That's violent crimes that are reported to police. And uh, in the last reporting period, uh, only about 45% of the murders were solved. So, you know, we're looking at this because of this event uh, that, of course, is horrific, but there, there are upwards of 20,000 homicides each year, and if half of them, or almost half of them, are going unsolved, we're really missing the opportunity to, to protect more people from more violence. And what we have to do is turn our resources back to 
focusing on solving the crimes that occurred and take those people and, and protect society from them. Michael, thank you. Michael German thank with you. us there. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.